Hello everybody, it's Mr. Second Amendment. Today we're doing kind of a cool, quick look video. Uh, just received my Palmetto State Armory or the Harrington and Richardson. This is an M16A1, complete lower that I just ordered from them. Came in yesterday, so I figured we could do a nice, uh, quick look at it. And you guys could check it out. But for those who don't know, uh, Palmetto State Armory did acquire Harrington and Richardson. They used to make M16, some of the older guns back in the day for the U.S. government. So this is kind of their clone retro offering. Uh, this is the first time I've gotten my hands on it, got to see it, so let's go ahead and check it out. One of the coolest things about it is that gray anodizing. And this is just a standard aero precision lower. Um, may not be able to totally tell, but there is a difference from our hard coat black anodizing that we're all used to these days. And then you get your old school gray anodizing, which is really cool. Another thing too is Palmetto um, bought or worked with Nodak Spud. So for those who know, they've done a lot of old school upper and lower receiver forgings. And you can kind of see the difference here with the old school lower profile versus kind of the new school, what we're used to today. And again, we can see it on the back here um, and also on the top where the charging handle kind of interfaces. You can see that old forging, that old school profile of how they used to do lowers um, is totally correct here, uh, which is really awesome to see. I think you can also see the anodizing difference a little better from this angle. And I've got this just stripped up a receiver right now. I just snapped on it, but you can really tell the difference between that black and that gray anodizing. So overall, um, I am impressed with what we have going here. Of course, you got your A1 pistol grip, kind of interesting metal inserts for that sling loop that they didn't really use that much. Uh, we do have our A1 butt stock, so a little bit shorter. It's about the fifth position on a standard six position buffer tube that's about your length of pole. Rear sling swivel, interesting. The old school style of got a roll pin holding this in and got this kind of rubber coated sling swivel there um, this one m16 a1 blem lower that i got does not have any trap door um, for cleaning kit anything like that but one thing i like too is our safety is very positive nice and positive safety there's no mush um, it's definitely on or it's off i like that and going back to the old school, there's no notch or marking on the other side to tell you what position it's in. So that would be correct um, for an early M16A1 kind of feature. Magazine release button is also anodized with the kind of gray. It's very light compared to the receiver and they did the trigger guard as well. And I know they do the charging handle in the gray anodizing as well. So overall, pretty impressed with it. Again, um, I knew it was a blam, didn't bother me at all. And you know, I've seen some pretty, pretty gnarly M16s, A2s and M4s. I've seen some pretty gnarly uh, government issue rifles and carbines that definitely had a hell of a lot worse. I do like that they keep the forging flash at least back here and inside the trigger guard. I've even seen them left on the front of the magwell. And this would be, I mean, if you're looking to clone, you know, a government end item, an original M16A1 kind of build, so far this looks like a really cool, really cool choice. Also with these markings, um, they are laser engraved. I do like the old school actual roll marks. For those who've seen them on old Colts, um, old rock rivers, just older guns that actually have roll mark markings. They're a little bit inconsistent. Um, the depth of it is a little different, but um, I do I do like, if it's gonna be laser, which everything is kind of laser engraved these days, um, I do think they did a good job though. Um, it looks very nice. Got your original H&R logo. Um, same kind of markings that the originals had. And the serial numbers, I believe H&R, when they were actually making these for the U.S. government, they started at uh, the 2 million range, which they went ahead and did on this one as well. So overall, I think this is pretty cool. I mean, it is actually Harrington and Richardson. 
Um, so there's no Palmetto State markings on it. The only way you can tell West Columbia, South Carolina. But between the Nodak Spud uh, original receiver profile, the gray uh, anodizing, everything else you get with this A1 furniture. Overall, I think this is pretty good choice uh, if you're looking to clone an original M16 A1. And they do have other offerings as well. So I have checked everything. Fire Control Group works. Um, that safety, like I said, very positive. Um, with just a couple empty stripped uppers, um, I did check the fit in terms of uh, the front pivot pin, rear takedown pin. Everything is, is great. Um, magazines, all my magazines lock in place, fall free. So in terms of functionality, uh, we're, it's got everything we're looking for. I think the reason they, they blamed it was the gray anodizing is a little light on this side, a little hard to make out with the lighting. Um, and then these kind of weird marks that only show up in certain light. But at the end of the day, um, the blem here, it's all aesthetics, uh, nothing functionally wrong with this lower. And, you know, I'm just very impressed for the price, getting something retro this cool. And of course, you got to have the old school magazines, if I can get that in focus. I've got one of these old school 20 rounders, so I think it's pretty cool. And ultimately, the issues with the finish don't bother me. Um, you know, it is cloning a government and item. The U.S. government with the mil spec and the technical data packages over the years and just how manufacturers have to make M16s, M4s. The government cares um, how it works and different steel types and heat treatments and dimensions. Aesthetically, there is not a lot of concern there. And, you know, these raw for, uh, forging seams, um, any issues with the uniformity of, you know, the finish or the anodizing, those things, you know, honestly, this is a very accurate to a government end item. It may not necessarily be perfect aesthetically with a perfect uniform finish. Uh, you might have things like that going on, but at the end of the day, not too worried about it. It actually makes it a little more correct. So at the end of the day, so far, everything checks out. It looks really cool. Um, it's just cool to have it. So if you're trying to do some retro stuff, you couldn't get your hands on the Brownell stuff, and you want some awesome actual lineage with Harrington and Richardson to the original M16A1s and some of the other offerings they have, I'd say definitely go for it. So far, so good. Eventually, I'll get a 20-inch upper to do an, a full M16A1 build. But in the meantime, I think I'll probably just use this lower in other ways and just kind of enjoy it, put it through the paces, and just have something different, something kind of retro, something cool.